Let's do a rapid review of commonly tested cardiology concepts that are commonly tested on the internal medicine shelf, family medicine shelf, and the USMLE Step 2 CK and the USMLE Step 3. So let's begin. A patient presents with symptoms of chest pain, fatigue, and lightheadedness. An ECG is done and is shown here. What is the first step in management of this patient? Atropine. Because as you can see in this ECG, this patient is bradycardic. What is the next best step in management if this treatment is ineffective? Epinephrine, dopamine, transcutaneous pacing. A 71-year-old male presents with exertional syncope, delayed diminished carotid pulse, and a harsh ejection systolic murmur in the second intercostal space. What test should be done to confirm the diagnosis? A transthoracic echocardiogram. What clinical features are present in a patient with a right ventricular MI? Hypotension, elevated JVP, and to clear lung fields. What is the diagnostic test of choice in a hypertensive patient with recurrent ventricular tachycardia? Serum electrolytes and digoxin levels. So recall that patients who are hypertensive can take medications that can cause electrolyte abnormalities and predispose them to developing arrhythmias. Examples of those drugs include loop diuretics such as furosemide that can cause hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia, while digoxin toxicity can be potentiated in hypokalemic states. A 30-year-old female presents with transient unilateral loss of vision. She has a past medical history of hypertension and stroke. What is the most likely diagnosis in this patient? Fibromuscular dysplasia. A patient with a past medical history of hypertension presents with hypotension, wheezing, bradycardia, and AV block. What is the most likely diagnosis in this patient? Beta blocker toxicity. How would you manage this patient? Secure the airway, give isotonic fluids, give atropine to treat the hypotension and bradycardia, and IV glucagon. What is the mainstay treatment in an alcoholic with thrombocytopenia, macrocytosis, elevated transaminases, and dilated cardiomyopathy?
alcohol cessation. A patient presents with syncope. Physical exam reveals systolic murmur heard at the left sternal border. It is found that the symptoms are due to mutations in the cardiac beta myosin heavy chain gene. What is the inheritance pattern of this condition? Autosomal dominant. A patient presents with syncope. Physical exam reveals systolic murmur heard at the left sternal border. It is found that the symptoms are due to mutations in the cardiac beta myosin heavy chain gene. Would the murmur worsen or improve with decreased preload? The murmur would worsen with decreased preload. What are the three most common causes of aortic stenosis in the general population? Calcified aortic valves bicuspid aortic valve, rheumatic heart disease. A patient has unexplained diastolic heart failure, low voltage on EKG, an echo showing increased wall thickness and normal left ventricular cavity dimensions. What is the most likely diagnosis in this patient? Cardiac amyloidosis. What is the most likely diagnosis of a young female smoker that presents with transient chest pain at night? Variant angina. And recall that smoking is the greatest risk factor for this condition. If you are enjoying this content so far, please be sure to pop the like button Hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. You can also click join to become a member of my channel. So let's continue. What is the treatment of choice in this patient? And recall that this patient is the one that has variant angina. smoking cessation, as well as calcium channel blockers or nitrates. What is the most common location of a cardiac myxoma? The left atrium. What is the treatment of choice of fibromuscular dysplasia? Percutaneous angioplasty with stent placement. True or false? ACE inhibitors are contraindicated in unilateral renal artery stenosis. False. 
What heart sound can be heard in patients in the acute phase of an MI due to ischemia-induced myocardial dysfunction? A S4 heart sound or atrial gallop. What lab test is usually the most reliable indicator of coronary reocclusion after an MI because it typically returns to normal after one to two days? CKMB Patients with type A or type B dissection who are hypertensive are usually treated with what drug? IV labetalol. What causes a reduced cardiac index, increased SVR, and elevated PCWP due to ventricular pump failure. Cardiogenic shock. A patient presents with erectile dysfunction, hip pain, and absent femoral pulses. What is the most likely diagnosis? Laricia's syndrome. A patient presents with cough, hemoptysis, and dyspnea. An echo reveals left atrial dilation. What is the most likely diagnosis? And what is the patient at risk of developing because of this? The diagnosis is mitral stenosis and the patient is at increased risk of developing atrial fibrillation because of this. What is the most useful intervention to improve functional capacity and reduce symptomatic claudication in patients with peripheral arterial disease? Supervised Graded Exercise Program What levels should be checked in a patient who is taking statins and presents with myalgias? CPK Levels if these levels are extremely elevated, then the next best step is to discontinue the statins because recall that we would be concerned about the patient developing rhabdomyolysis with renal failure. What drug can be used during myocardial perfusion scanning to reveal areas of restricted myocardial perfusion? Dipyridamol. Recall that the redistribution of the coronary blood flow to non-disease segments induced by this drug is called coronary steel phenomenon. What electrolyte abnormality can loop diuretics cause to potentiate side effects of digoxin?
hypokalemia. A patient presents with pain, pallor, paresthesia, and pulselessness of the lower limbs. A diagnosis of acute limb ischemia is confirmed. What is the best first initial step in management? IV heparin. What is the definitive treatment of acute limb ischemia? Surgical embolectomy or intraarterial fibrinolysis. A patient with a history of hypertension presents with severe, sharp, tearing chest pain. There is no variation in systolic blood pressure between arms. What is the diagnostic test of choice? Urgent bedside transesophageal echo. So I highlighted the point that the patient does not have variation in systolic blood pressure between arms because the absence of this finding does not rule out an aortic dissection. So this patient has an aortic dissection. So the best next diagnostic test of choice would be the urgent bedside TTE. Recall that risk factors of aortic dissection include hypertension, Marfan syndrome, and illicit drug use. What is the most important non-pharmacologic measure to decrease blood pressure in an overweight patient? Weight loss. What is used to treat hemodynamically stable patients with a wide complex tachycardia? Amiodarone or lidocaine? What arrhythmia is most specific for digitalis toxicity? Atrial tachycardia with AV block. So recall that digitalis increases ectopy in the atria and ventricles, leading to atrial tachycardia. There is also an increase in vagal tone and decreased conduction between the AV nodes, leading to AV block. What drugs can reduce the response to antihypertensive medications? NSAIDs, decongestants, and glucocorticoids. What changes in cardiac output Systemic vascular resistance, CVP, and PCWP will you see in hypovolemic shock? Decreased cardiac output, CVP, and PCWP. Increased SVR. How can thiazide diuretics affect glucose, calcium, potassium, and sodium levels? <laughs>
Thiazide diuretics can cause hyperglycemia, hypercalcemia, hyponatremia, and hypokalemia. Recall that they can also cause hyperuricemia. These are high-yield metabolic side effects of thiazide diuretics that you need to know. And you also need to pull up that like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never miss another high-yield review like this. What complication can develop in patients with mitral stenosis who develop significant left atrial dilation? Atrial fibrillation. Too much of which medication can cause hypoglycemia, hypotension, bradycardia, wheezing, delirium, and seizures? Beta blockers. Too much of which medication can cause fatigue, anorexia, nausea, blurred vision, disturbed color perception, and cardiac arrhythmias? Digoxin. Recall that we treat this with digoxin specific antibody. What is the first-line treatment for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Beta blockers or cardiac acting calcium channel blockers. Does cardiac index increase or decrease in heart failure? Cardiac index decreases in heart failure. What are the strongest predictors of triple A rupture or expansion? A large aneurysm greater than 5 centimeters. A rapid rate of expansion, that is, more than 0.5 cm in 6 months or more than 1 cm in 1 year. And lastly, current cigarette smoking. What is a major cause of morbidity and mortality in patients with PAD. Cardiovascular disease. What drugs have an effect on mortality post-MI? Aspirin, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and statins. What drug should be given to all patients with unstable angina or NSTEMI and patients post PCI? Clopidogrel. Recall that it has an antiplatelet effect by acting as an antagonist of ADP. It is given for 30 days after placement of a metal stent or up to one year after drug eluting stents following PCI.
Clopidogrel helps to prevent subacute stent thrombosis. What drugs are best for initial rate control in a patient with atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response? Beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. If the patient is unstable, then you cardiovert. Post MI. A patient's ECG shows persistent ST segment elevation after a recent MI and deep Q waves in the same leads. What is the diagnosis? Ventricular aneurysm. Atrial fibrillation can be caused by ectopic foci in which vessel? Pulmonary vein. The most common cause of atrial flutter is a re-entrant circuit around which structure? Tricuspid annulus. What is the main reason for the increased incidence of orthostatic hypotension in the elderly? Progressively decreasing baroreceptor sensitivity and defects in myocardial response to this reflex. A patient presents weeks after an MI with chest pain that is improved with leaning forward. EKG shows diffuse ST elevations with the exception of reciprocal depression in AVR. What is the treatment of choice? NSAIDs, and if NSAIDs are contraindicated, then give corticosteroids. What pharmacologic treatment options are available for aortic regurgitation? Afterload reduction with hydrolysine and vasodilation with ACE inhibitors. What is the most likely diagnosis in a young patient with a crescendo-decrescendo murmur at the left sternal border? Hocum. What is the most likely cause of a delayed and diminished carotid pulse? Aortic stenosis. So recall that in aortic stenosis, you can see a delayed or slow rising and diminished or weak carotid pulse. This is called pulsus parvus and tardus. In aortic stenosis, there can also be a presence of a single and soft second heart sound or S2. And you may also have a mid to late peaking systolic murmur with maximal intensity at the second right intercostal space radiating to the carotids. And if you want to continue your prep for your shelf exams and for the assembly, then click this video right here.